recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our last Hi. Saturday Hi, in everyone. May mini Zoom. Hello, thank you. You're welcome. So again, if everyone can please put themselves on mute unless you have a question that just helps keep any background noise to a minimum. I put my two teenagers on mute. They are here helping us out at the store today. So uh, definitely we'll try and be as quiet as possible other than the thing you're here for, which is me. So today we're going to be making uh, spinner cards. And I've got a few different samples here. And the idea is that you've got this fun little card with a, a floating image. And what you do is you wind it up and then close it like so when you put it in the envelope. And then when the person receives the card, they open it up and it goes spinning on you. That one didn't work as well. Let's try one of the other ones. This one worked really well for us. So you wind it up three or four times. And then when you open the card, oh, now it's not, there we go. It'll spin on you. So it's, got, it's just got a fun little interactive element to it. These ones here I have done with stamp sets. And uh, these guys here even, um, I die cut the shape out so that it's not, uh, so that you've got the shape to it. This one I just, because I had two different um, things I was putting on there that didn't line up, I just used the circle. circle. So it just makes it that much easier uh, to match up because you do need a front and a back. And then the same thing on this card here. So when I was using my punch, my large, that's, this is a square, but when I used the large punch and I came in from the top, it didn't give me much of a border at the top. So instead I put my floss in sideways so that we've got a horizontal spinner as opposed to a vertical. So you can do whichever way you want. And then when that opens up, it goes spin, spin, spin like that. It's super easy to put together, but like most interactive cards, you do need to uh, be methodical and take it step by step and um, not get out of the wrong order. So we're gonna go ahead and tuck these off to the side. What you need to get started is your card base. So I've got my card base here, I've already scored it. This is just a standard A2, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. But in reality, for these particular cards, you can do any size you want. So for today, go ahead and make a card base, whatever size you want. When I go through the measurements though, please know that this, I'm working on that four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I have cut myself already a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece for the front. And I'm just realizing I did not cut anything for the back. So, uh, or for the inside. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna take this rainbow paper most of the supplies I'm using today are from one of our bundles this morning. This was the birthday wishes uh, grab bag from Fun Stamper's Journey. So I'm going to cut this also at, actually, so I'm going to cut a little bit smaller. I'm going to cut it at four by five and a quarter. Because that way I can make it stretch just a little bit further. So there we've got our two pieces of pattern paper and our card base. So the next thing we have to do, and I'm just going to keep this guy off to the side here so we can kind of follow the steps, is we need to cut the opening for our spinner. So if you've got a selection of punches handy or dies, um, this is where you want to cut your larger shape right now. Now, you also, you want to cut it through your card base as well as through your pattern paper, but you don't want to glue your pattern paper down just yet. So that's where I've got my purple tape, or if you've got some low tack washi tape, what I did is I just took a couple of little pieces, actually I've got a piece right here, 
I'm going to make sure it's lined up as if I were sticking it down, but I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here and I'm going to put a little bit of tape on the back side just so it does not move. Now this time I am going to use a two inch circle punch. Again, use whatever size you have at your uh, disposal. And you can also do squares. So you can see this one, I did a square as my opening as opposed to a circle. As long as it's your bigger size, that you need your bigger sized tool right now. So I am just going to come right in from the top of my card, make sure I'm centered left to right. Make sure that that, paper, that pattern paper doesn't fly too much. And I'm gonna pop it out like so. Now I've just been keeping these little bits because you never know when A, you're gonna need just a plain white circle and you never know when you're gonna need just a circle of pattern paper. So don't throw those away. Now you can remove, and again, ladies, if I am going too fast or if you need me to repeat a step, please just shout out and let me know. I'm happy to go over things more than once. All right, so I'm removing my purple tape so that my pattern piece of paper comes up. And for right now, I'm just gonna set it aside. This is where you need your dental floss or fishing wire. Uh, you can use twine as well. I find twine can be a little bit thick depending on the brand. You really just need some kind of string that's gonna go through and hold, hold your floaty bits without causing too much drama and without taking away too much attention from, uh, from what you're working on. So I've got um, a strip here and you don't want it too, too much bigger than the size of your card. We're gonna trim it down anyways. So just break that off. And then I like to use my strong score tape in order to attach this. I'm turning it sideways just because it's easier for me to work on. What I'm gonna do is take, and I like the wider stuff because we're gonna try and stick this on it. So if you've got a narrow piece, it's harder to line up. The, the wide stuff makes it easier to cheat. So I'm just gonna take a strip of my score tape and put it coming down from my circle in a straight line. I'm gonna take another little piece. So imagine, so this is where your grid lines can help if you've got it straight. You wanna put another little strip just right here. Actually, let me move that up so you guys can see better. There's my line. I'm gonna put another little strip right here. So as if it were connected, but obviously you don't want tape going through the center of your opening. <clears throat> All right, and I've got a little bit too much, so I'm gonna grab my scissors. And let's trim that extra bit off. All right, so we now have our score tape. This piece here does not need to go all the way down. You can if you wish, but it does not need to go all the way down. The other thing I will caution you, now I cut my pattern paper so that it'll fit edge to edge. But if you were doing, having a little bit border, a bit of a border, make sure you don't go right to the top because otherwise it will show. All right, so now I'm going to peel the backing off my tape. And I'm gonna take my dental floss and I'm just gonna stretch it right across that opening. You wanna get it as taut as possible and get it stuck down into that tape. And then just for extra stick, I'm gonna go and do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape over top of my dental floss here. And I'm gonna put a little piece up here at the top. That's just gonna make sure that your string stays nice and tight. And again, I'm a little bit long, but that's okay. Once you've got that second layer of tape in place, 
I'm going to try and bring this down a bit, see if you guys can see a bit better. So as you can see, I've got double tape here, double tape here with my dental floss in between. You can now trim it all off. So including the extra bits of twine, we don't need it, or sorry, dental floss, we don't need that anymore. Put it in my trash pile. And now I can just go ahead and adhere this over top. So that's going to hide all of our sticky bits and our messy bits. So I will go ahead and peel this tape. And I'm just going to use regular tape runner on the back of this. And because everything should line up, because that's the way we prepped it, we're just going to line it back up. Your circle's going to line up. And there we are. So that is the base all done. The next thing we have to do now is make our little spinny bit. So my circle was two inches. I'm gonna make my inner part one and a quarter inch. You want, I would say you'd want at least a half inch difference in size. So if your circle is two inches, I wouldn't go any bigger than one and a half. You definitely can go smaller. And again, if you are doing uh, die cut shapes like I did here with the speech bubble, uh, as long as you can fit it in that opening and it can spin freely, you should be good to go. So I'm just gonna grab some scrap white paper and I'm gonna punch two circles. One and two, because we need a front and a back. And I am going to stamp a smiley face. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use blue. So I've got my Versafine. I'm going to put blue right here on this one. And what else am I going to do? You know what, just because it's cool and I haven't tried it yet, I'm going to, oh yeah, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to use the key symbol on the other one. As if this is for a teenage boy, they'll appreciate that. So I use the blue, I'm going to grab green this time. Now you could absolutely do this in black and then color it with your Copics or your watercolors. Anything really goes. So there, I've got the dude going peace. I've got my smiley, happy face. Front and back. And like, you know, so on this one I did hello and TGI, or sorry, text me. I've got, this one had the image on one side with a word on the other side. And this one, because I had a little bit more space, I've got the star with the happy birthday on the back. Really anything goes. Excuse me? Yes. Is it is it one single piece of uh, fishing line? It's not yes. doubled over. I did not double it over. If you feel like your, your twine is, is fragile, you might want to double it up, but to me that just gets a little bit, um, just more chances for it to not work. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I've just got a single one. Um, I've been playing with mine since last night and haven't had the break yet. So hopefully, you know, the person's going to be pretty forgiving. It's, it's pretty forgiving. It should last. So it's just a single piece of, of dental floss that I've got going top to bottom. All right, I'm gonna take my circles and I am going to flip them over. Now make sure you keep them in the same vertical direction. So I'm making sure I'm flipping left to right. And the same with my 
smiley face left to right. And I'm gonna put a strip of score tape vertically down the center of those. Let me move up. It does not have to go edge to edge, but you do wanna cover most of it. Like so. Push one off to the side. The other one, you're going to peel the tape off and you're gonna put it behind your dental floss. Try to get my hands out of the way. And just like we did on the base, you're gonna push that dental floss down into the tape. And then at this point, I do like to add a little bit of extra liquid glue just to get all the edges. because now, and I should make sure that we had put that right side up. Yep, we did, good. Make sure your next piece is right side up. Peel that backing. And I'm just layering it right over top, sandwiching that twine in between the two circles. And then all you have to do is give it a little wind and one, two, three, woo, it spins away. So the second piece of pattern paper, I bet you're wondering what, what that's for. I like to put a second piece on the inside just so that when you've got your big space here, you're not just seeing white space behind. Now, if that's an artistic choice, by all means, because maybe you've got a nice dark galaxy background or something here, but I like to have a little bit of extra punch of color, so I'm just going to tuck this inside. Let's put the bubbles up. And because this one's a little bit smaller, it's going to have that little bit of a white border on the inside. So that way you've got a nice gold happening. And look how that rainbow just shines through those balloons and whatnot. Now remember I said if you've got extra circles and things, you can keep those for other reasons. What I can do now is take that circle, which was the center punch here. I can switch out my stamps for the happy birthday. This time I think I'll use orange because this is a gorgeous orange. Stamp it on my circle. And now I'm just going to attach this down here on my card. So how simple was that? That only took us maybe 15, 20 minutes to put that together. It's one of those ones that once you get started making them, I dare you to try and stop. Uh, you can now take your bullying or your extra bits and decorate this guy a little bit more if you wish, or keep it nice and simple. I'll probably get some uh, red uh, Nouveau uh, to fill in the hearts there. Um, I may even give them a nose or add some little sparkles down below, but we can really jazz these cards up and it's not going to affect the mechanism whatsoever. And like I said, if, you, if something happens where you don't have a lot of space up here, as in this card, and let me, I don't know if you can see it very well, let me find a dark piece. Yeah, we'll use the card. You can see how this is really narrow up here. I was really hesitant to put the dental floss up here because I wasn't confident it was gonna stay stuck, no matter how much score tape you put on there. So I just went the other way. I went horizontal. Um, or in theory, I guess I could have turned my card this way and your spinner can be on that one side. So the possibilities are absolutely endless and they create lots of fun and simple interactivity for your card. So I will open the floor now. Does anybody have any questions about these cards? 
And if not, then it'll be time for everyone to get back to their day or if, they're, if they set aside the afternoon to crop and craft, that's the best way to spend a Saturday. So Thanks, Jerry. You're welcome. I will make, I will call out one other thing. If you did not catch the news on our Facebook Live this morning, we are going to start opening the store on Thursday next week. We will only be open on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from noon until four. But because of that, I may have to move our Zooms a little bit earlier in the morning uh, so that I can be available for people in the store um, in the afternoon. Haven't 100% decided on that and how we're gonna speak that, but just watch our newsletter uh, this week because all of the details on all of that will be available at that time. All right, Thanks. everyone. Well, if there are no more questions, no, then I will, I will sign off. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry.